Hello and welcome to another edition of another book review. This week I'll be reviewing Mr. Mercedes by Stephen King. I'll talk very briefly about the author, give a spoiler-free overview of the plot, talk about what I liked about the book, what I didn't like about the book, and we'll finish off by talking about who I'd recommend the book to. So uh, Stephen King is a very famous author, mostly known for his horror fiction. Every once in a while he does dive into other genres. Uh, I'll leave some links in the comment section below if you want to learn, uh, read other, listen to other reviews that I've, I've done of his stuff in the past. I go a little bit into his background there. Uh, but this is a crime novel, uh, Mr. Mercedes, and is set in kind of an unknown Midwestern city. It's most likely kind of a fictionalized version of Cleveland. There's some references to uh, jerseys of different sports teams, and just assume that it's kind of Cleveland-esque. Um, but what it does is it follows a main character. His name is Bill, I believe it's Hudges, who is a retired police officer who, uh, like many retired police officer, gets dragged back into the world of crime when the perpetrator of his last case uh, brings him back into the fold and re-engages him. So uh, I did really enjoy that character. The character is retired. He's overweight. Um, he is treated with kind of that respect throughout the novel. Uh, Stephen King doesn't really pull any punches for him or give him superhuman strength or anything like that. He's treated like a retired 60-something uh, police officer who is who's overweight by uh, 30, 40 pounds. So I, I did enjoy that um, aspect of it. He's very capable. He Anytime he uses kind of street smarts, as it were, it, it feels real. Uh, it feels like it's earned. Uh, it feels natural to that character. Um, I really enjoyed kind of the opening scene of the book that kind of, I don't want to give any spoilers, but it kind of outlines the crime that uh, Bill Hudges is unable to solve uh, before the book kind of quote unquote starts, so kind of sets up the actions of this character uh, in a really gripping way. Uh, so I thought that was really good. I thought the supporting characters were for the most part well done. Um, I liked the. Uh, there's a couple points in the book that I think were highlights. There's a point midway through the book where the book takes a turn that I didn't see coming, and I really appreciated that. I was surprised, and I think it gave a certain weight to a certain character um, that wouldn't have been there otherwise. I think he also actually does a pretty good job on the um, ending of the book. Stephen King, uh, in my opinion, n gets maybe too much heat for his endings. He's not the world's worst uh, author when it comes to endings, but I think a lot of times he gets flack. Some of it's deserved for his endings, so not always the best, but I thought this book actually ended on a pretty pretty perfect note. Um I always like when Stephen King is writing outside of Maine, uh, so it always gives his books other flavors. If you're kind of a good, a used, you're kind of used to his writings. Most of his stuff takes place in Maine, but there are some uh, outliers where they take place in other places of other parts of the country. And this, along with uh, another book I reviewed for the channel, Sleeping Beauties, uh, which he co-authored, but is set in West Virginia. And like that book, this book has a little bit of sprinklings of uh, other regions, which I think is kind of cool. It gives him kind of, if he were an artist, almost different colors to play with. So some of the things that I didn't like as much, uh, there are definitely parts of the book that felt kind of predictable. I think I pointed that out in the opening or let, uh, pointed towards it. It is kind of a, a crime fiction novel, and there are definitely some tropes that he's playing around with here. Uh, I think there is one part of the novel, uh, there's kind of an action scene that feels kind of forced but for the most part, I enjoyed the book. I think if you're a Stephen King fan, I would definitely recommend checking it out. The things that I've kind of talked about in other past videos that I don't like about him as far as some of his dialogue choices and some of his uh, characters knowing things that a character that age really wouldn't know are here in, in effect. And so if those things bother you, uh, then he doesn't he's not throwing out the old playbook. And so you do have characters who know references to maybe older movies than, than you would think like a 16-year-old would know. But that's not really a, a huge problem with the novel, uh, and I enjoyed it for the most part. I think it's actually pretty pretty uh, propulsive. I think the villain is uh, well thought out, and I think he was... What you want from a villain is both kind of relatable, but also uh, someone that you can loathe, and I think he struck the balance there. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely would recommend picking it out if you're a Stephen King fan. If you're a crime fan in general, um, 
you it may have a hard time, harder time with it. There are, I should say too, there are some elements. Uh, there are instances in the book where there are racial slurs that are thrown around. Um, it makes sense into the viewpoints of the character who's using them, and I don't think they're done excessively, but that's just something to note. I also think there is a um, uh, acts of incest. It's not. Um, gratuitous as far as the description of it, but it's also something I imagine would be a sensitive topic to a lot of people. Um, not what the book is about, but it's definitely in the book. And so if those things were something that you would want to be turned off by, uh, I definitely can understand that. If you're someone who kind of likes your your crime fiction more on the line of something like Seven or something that kind of hard-boiled, I don't think that this is that much. And I also don't think, like, I reviewed a Dennis Lehan novel uh, earlier for the channel, and I don't think it's quite as purely crime, if that makes sense. And so it's kind of straddling both of those worlds. I don't think it's quite as grim as Seven. In fact, I know it's quite, not as quite as grim as Seven, uh, the film Seven. But just to give you a sense as far as the spectrum of where it could be, I definitely see it kind of more of between those two, you know, uh, they're not poles, but there's those two kind of spectrum of uh, tent poles of, of kind of the genre. So that is Mr. Mercedes. Like I said, again, it is part of a trilogy. So if that's something that scares you away, the book does work as a standalone novel. It worked fine for me. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to pick up the second, third or books in the, the trilogy, but I also don't know that I necessarily would not either because I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was propulsive. I think it does what it's supposed to do. I don't think it's the most imaginative thing. I don't think it's necessarily going to break any new ground, but for what it does, it does it. Um, it's adequately done, uh, and there are some surprises in it that I was pleasantly surprised by. So um, that's Mr. Mercedes. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to be reviewing for next time, so uh, please feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, follow me. I'll have my, my Twitter link below. Until next time, bye.